They break fishermen's net and they hit their boats. And if some things happen, lives can be lost. We've had estimates that assess the problem at around 20% of uh, the global catch. Earth Report asks the question, will a multi-million dollar illegal fishing industry destroy local fishing communities around the world? Ruthless gangs of illegal fishermen are one of the major threats to global fish stocks. Now on BBC World News, Earth Report follows a fleet of Chinese and Korean vessels as they illegally plunder the seas off the coast of West Africa. Since the dawn of the new millennium, the United Nations has been warning of the grave consequences of rampant overfishing around the globe. But the story gets worse. Illegal and unlicensed trawlers fishing alongside legitimate boats cause yet more damage. The problem of illegal fishing is enormously widespread. We've had estimates that assess the problem at around 20% of uh, the global catch. These vessels have targeted the territorial waters of some of the poorest and most vulnerable countries in the world, often sneaking in after dark. They go in there and they put up their lights and they mask their call signs. They break fishermen's nets and they hit their boats. And if some things happen, lives can be lost. Today, Earth Report asks the question, will a multi-million dollar illegal fishing industry destroy local fishing communities around the world? The Atlantic Ocean off the coast of West Africa. It's one of the most fertile fishing grounds in the world. For thousands of years, it supported small coastal communities. But as the world's appetite for fish has grown larger, these seas have attracted fishing vessels from everywhere. About half fish legally, but 48% are believed to operate beyond the law. Illegal fishing is taking place everywhere, all around the world, and even in our own waters. Everybody's doing it. As fish stocks decline, there's more and more illegal activities taking place. Do you have fleets operating outside any kind of control, doing what they want, the real pirates? Both Greenpeace and the Environmental Justice Foundation have tracked vessels fishing off the coast of some of the poorest countries in Africa. <laughs> Helene Bors, a fisheries expert, has been tracking illegal and unlicensed boats for over 20 years. It's a hidden world few people know about. These vessels stay at sea for years. They transfer their fish onto other vessels, they get refueled at sea. The screws are changed at sea, etc. So nobody sees what's happening. There's nobody, nobody to go there and tell them to respect the rules. It's another world. It's a world so vast, the ocean off the West African coast covers thousands of square kilometers. Countries of this impoverished region are too poor to control their waters, an added incentive for illegal fishing vessels. The territory of these countries extends 200 nautical miles into the Atlantic. Foreign vessels must have a license to fish. There's also a 12-mile zone which is reserved almost exclusively for local fishermen. These zones provide a source of revenue and a means of managing fisheries. 
But unless these coastal waters are patrolled, foreign vessels can fish them illegally, without valid licenses and with impunity. Travelling along the West African coast, there is bountiful testimony about the activities of the illegal fishing boats. In Guinea, almost every coastal settlement has been affected. During the night, they come close to the shore and trawl the seabed. Early in the morning, about 4 or 5 a.m., that's when they leave. At night time, illegal vessels can stay hidden using no navigation lights, leaving local fishermen vulnerable. No. Almani Kamara was fishing at night when a trawler without lights appeared out of the dark. We hauled the fishing line quickly, but by the time we had started the engine and turned away, the trawler was making straight for us. In the time it took us to alter course, the trawler hit us, and a few minutes later our canoe was broken in two, and we were in the water. As he shows us his scars, he knows he's lucky to be alive. Three companions drowned. Moving up the West African coast, members of the Sierra Leonean fishing communities echoed the tales. They told their stories to a government fisheries officer. He's the master fisherman uh, here at Tombo. He's basically representing the fishermen. So then the inner might. So the trawler, why they talk so far, we left four uh, year of year. Amadou Seaport Kamara told us foreign boats were a constant threat. There had been an incident where the trawler actually rolled over the boat. All the fishermen were thrown uh, overboard. They went into the sea and then they, 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 they swim to escape, to, to secure their lives. Sometimes there are even accidents where trawlers have inflicted some wounds into fishermen. They have, they have this, this kind of case that is rampant, not only in Tombo, but all around the other fishing villages. It's hard to quantify the impact of illegal fishing on local communities, but anecdotal evidence suggests it's been hitting them hard. They can no more fish the way they used to do because, for example, they, waste, they have just wasted about, um, about uh, 12 gallons of, of, of petrol, no, 20, 25, of, uh, 25 gallons of, 25 pet gallon. of petrol, and they only caught about, um, about six dozens of, of fish which cannot even buy one gallon of petrol. What are, what are these guys? So we are floating fish. OK. So I'll take you. Take you. Fisheries experts from the UK's Department for International Development have tried, over the past decade, to assess the scale of the problem, putting a figure on the cost to us all. In about 2005, we commissioned a major study of the impact of illegal fishing on developing countries and also on, on ecosystems and we were able to derive a total figure for the value of fish stolen, if you like, from the world per annum. And this figure was in the order of nine billion US dollars. The problem has affected the entire food chain. Smoking fish to preserve them was once a much bigger industry. Before, the canoes caught a lot of fish close to the shore. But now they have to go further away and are gone for a few days or even a week to find fish. West African nations have no money to patrol their waters constantly. But every so often, a pirate vessel has been caught. This fishing vessel is under arrest for fishing without a license, fishing illegally in Guinean waters.
coast of West Africa is just one region where illegal fishing has flourished. The main reason? Countries don't have the money to patrol their waters. An expedition supported by Greenpeace and the Environmental Justice Foundation aimed to curtail pirate fishing in the area. Two fishery inspectors from Guinea brought with them lists of trawlers licensed to fish in Guinean waters. The plan was to arrest any vessel found fishing illegally. Thank you. 